All right, it is recording. Quiet on set. Ready? Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Cooking Chris's Dishes. That's right, this is the good old boy here, and I get the privilege of cooking dinner again tonight, and I get to show you how I do it. Now, like we've said before, we're going to cook you our favorite dishes, and this by far is my favorite dish of all of the recipes. She's got over 250 recipes on her blog and counting, and of all of them, this is my go-to when somebody says, what is the favorite thing that she's ever made? And this is it. And actually, I say that it's the favorite thing that she ever made. She blogged it. I actually made this dish. She texts me one day and says, hey, put this dish on. It shouldn't take you that long. We'll have it for dinner. I thought there's no way in the world with only five ingredients for this thing that it was going to be as good as it was. And it completely knocked my socks off. It's simple. It is a five-pound give or take a little bit of ounces there, five pound chuck roast, and you want to find a roast that's uh, got a good distribution of fat in it, and you also need one packet of ranch dressing, one packet of brown gravy mix, we've got an au jus gravy and it works really well with it, a half a stick of butter, and here's the really cool thing, they made this new invention with the butter companies, and it's really just a half stick of butter that comes in a packet, so you don't have to go cutting and measuring on all that. Six pepperoncinis, that's it. It takes literally less time than it will for me to explain it to you to put this together. It's real simple. You take your chuck roast, frozen or thawed, doesn't really matter, and you put it down, minus the packaging, you put it down in the crock pot. You take your ranch dressing, you crack her open, and you sprinkle it evenly over the roast. It looks like it's snowing, kind of like it is outside. And then you take your brown gravy mix, and you do the same thing right over the top of your ranch dressing, all over the roast until it's out. Boop. Then you take your butter, half stick, which is also known as a quarter cup and you put it right in the center of all your powders, all your gravy mixes and everything, right on top of the roast. Now before I touch the pepperoncinis. You don't want to cross-contaminate your foods. Okay, then you come in here and you grab six pepperoncinis and you put them around the bottom of your roast. There's a one and two and three and four and five and six. Just around, it kind of looks like they're running around in the circles around your roast. And that was it. That literally took me less than two minutes to put together. Put your lid on top and we're using a six quart all-in-one slow cooker. Any slow cooker will work as long as the roast fits in the bottom and you can put the pepperoncinis around it. So you don't have to get all fancy in your crock pots. All you need is something that will hold the roast. And then I come down here and I want to slow cook it and I want to do it for eight hours. Now, that's it. I'm done. Set it, forget it. One thing that you could do is after four hours, you come in and you can flip your roast over. All that's going to do is it's going to take all that juicy meat on the bottom and flip it over and let the top of it get just as juicy. Now, if you're going to work, you, don't, you just can't come home in the middle of the day and flip your roast, it's going to be fine. It tastes just as good. It's a really, really good roast. It's really that simple. Some people ask and say, well, why do you call this thing a Mississippi pot roast? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't know if it comes from Mississippi or if it's just the name of it. You can get a Philly cheesesteak in Indianapolis. It didn't come from Philadelphia, but it's still good. Mountain oysters don't come from the mountains. And for those of you who know what mountain oysters are, I promise you, after much debate, we're probably not going to put that on the Crock-Pot site. For those who don't know what mountain oysters are, I know you're Googling that right now, and I'm sorry, 
But anyway, we're going to come back in about eight hours, and we're going to show you what this roast looks like. Stay tuned. All right, so if you look in the crock pot, it's been about five hours now. Sorry, we're not running around. But like I said, about halfway through your cooking, it might be beneficial if you flip your roast over. So take a look at that roast. It's all soaking down there in the juices. You can see the butter's all melted and the gravy's all kind of starting to go together. But there's a little bit of stuff here on top. We want that all to be incorporated in the liquid, so just take it. Flip it over. Now look at that. And I can tell you right now, it's already starting to tender up. It's still got three hours left, but it's already getting fork tender. So we're going to let that go for another three hours, and we'll be back. All right, so it's been about seven hours and 20 minutes since we first put the roast on. And so that means a couple hours after we flipped it, about two and a half hours after we flipped it over. And I just looked in there a little bit ago, and it's done. Which goes to show you, every slow cooker is a little bit different. It's going to cook a little faster in some, a little slower than others, so you need to watch it. If you're gone for eight hours and you put it on, I'm sure it's going to be fine. It's sitting in a lot of liquid, so it's not going to dry out on you. But let's take a look and see what this baby looks like. Oh, it smells good. I wish you guys could smell this. So there is our roast. It came out perfect. Everything's all broken down. Set that right there. And it is fork tender. And this is how we have it at our house. Let me get into these tongs. Is we have it like shredded beef. And look how easy that pulls away. And that is just after sitting in a slow cooker for seven and a half hours it just pulls apart. All the connective tissue is broken down. The fat distributed in the meat itself. And it comes out just like this. And you can have this in a Manhattan. Have an overmatched potatoes. Chris makes a great parsley potatoes recipe on our slow cooker site. Check it out. Again, recipes at crock.com. I prefer mine in a sandwich. And all I do just take a roll or a bun. This is a toasted onion roll. And I'm just going to scoop some of that onto there. I'm a big beef eater, so I'm going to go for a huge pile of meat on top. And then a little tomato to go on top of that. And then my favorite thing to do is I take the bun or the hoagie roll or whatever kind of bread you're using and you're gonna say oh, you can't do that yes I can it's my house I dip it straight into the juices in there let it soak into the bun and right on top of the sandwich it goes and that is how I like to eat the roast now I'll take a quick bite here just so you don't think I'm teasing you here we go right here job right now though. Of course you can taste the ranch and the gravy. The butter just seeps through along with the fat and the meat. And then you just get a hint of just a little bit of heat. Not a lot. It's not hot when it comes to the pepperoncinis. But you get a lot of that sour from the vinegar that goes with it. And it is absolutely perfect. So again, you saw it only took a couple minutes to put this on. As long as you're patient, it's so worth it. This is the best recipe that is on our site. Uh, one thing to let you know is when you're done with any leftovers, if you have any, you probably won't. But let's say with a five pound roast and you're eating for two, you're probably going to have some leftovers once you're done with it. Make sure that you store it back in the juices. And if you can wait until the next day, it's even better. And if you're wanting to check out this particular recipe, if you're wanting to find this particular recipe, it's recipes at the .com. <laughs> it is. You're, if you want to check out this particular recipe, <laughs> still hot. Mm. Let's try this again. <laughs> Go into your address bar and type recipes that crock .com, Put a spell.
space and then type in Mississippi Roast and this will be the thing that pops up and it is awesome. Thanks again for watching. Bye.